this. I forgot my entire introduction. This is fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, <welcome to> this. <laughs> Parsons, violinist and facilitator with Violectric and Violectric Education programs. I'm also a freelance musician and I have a private studio for virtual and in-person lessons in the Orlando area. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about how a violin works. The first four-string violin was attributed to Andrea Amati in the mid-1500s. Um, that particular instrument was made to be more of a chamber instrument, so it had a very soft sound. Mr. Amati's descendant was actually the teacher of Stradivarius, who many of you may know. Uh, his most expensive violin and the most famous violin went for about $15.9 million a few years ago. Now that original violin has actually been altered over time. So if you look at today's modern violin, the neck angle is relatively steep. There's a large space underneath it. Originally, this was much flatter and it had considerably less power. So used in a small ensemble like chamber music, it was perfectly fine. In the mid 1800s, people started using violins as solo instruments and it just wasn't quite strong enough to hold up. So let's take a look at some of the things that make a violin a violin. So this here is a blank violin. It's called a violin in the white. It's never been finished, and in fact, it's in two pieces right now. When you look at the inside of the violin, you'll see a few things. The first thing you might notice is that the back of a violin is actually two different pieces. Some violins do have a one-piece back, but it's more common to find it in two. A lot of the two-piece backs will even have tiny little pieces of wood glued right down the seam called pleats, and that helps reinforce it. Another thing you'll see on the inside as you'll see these blocks. You have a block here, a block here, and then a block in each of the corners. This gives you some additional support because otherwise what would happen when you have all of the pressure and tension from the strings on the top, it would just kind of fold in half, kind of like jello. The other thing that you'll notice is there are actually rib linings. So it's just a small flexible piece of wood that goes along the inside of the instrument and it adds a little bit of extra reinforcement. Now when you look at the top, You'll see a little bit more. On the inside of a violin, there's a bar right here. It's called a bass bar. This was actually one of the things that they beefed up when they went from your traditional chamber orchestra Baroque violin, which is the very early violins, to your more modern violin. The bass bar allowed for a larger sound, um, a much bigger bass, and it also added a little bit of extra support to the top of the instrument. So as you may have noticed with the violin in the white, it was in multiple pieces. And it was missing a few of the things that this particular violin has. So not only is the top of my violin on, it's been finished. You have pegs, you have a bridge, the strings, tailpiece, and chin rest. These are the main things that hold your violin together. The chin rest doesn't really hold it together. It's more of an, an addition to keep your head steady. The violin works as a series of vibrations. It is a resonating instrument and almost nothing on this instrument is glued down. So yes, the top sides and neck are glued together, but it's with a very, very special glue that when it hits on impact will actually come apart. That saves the violin from cracking down the top. When you play a violin, you start with a string. You can pluck it or you can bow it, but regardless, it catches on the, on the string and it vibrates back and forth. These vibrations go into the bridge, which is not glued down, it's just held in place by tension, it goes through the bridge to a little tiny post on the inside of the instrument called the sound post. It's located just behind the bridge and underneath it. The bridge brings the vibrations to the back of the instrument. The whole body of the instrument starts vibrating like this. It kicks the vibrations around in a circle and then it pops it out the apples. So these right here, these little F-holes, can you guess why they're called F-holes? So because of that, it basically acts like an acoustic amplifier. It takes those little tiny vibrations from the string, 
brings it into the instrument and shoots it right back out so you can hear it. As you can see, the violin is a very complex instrument. It's made of multiple different parts that are all carefully tuned and cut and fit to each other to make the perfect sound, and it resonates freely. In just a moment, I'm going to play for you a piece that should demonstrate this fairly well. Thank you. 